Hello, hello. This is T. Josiah Gaming. Here is some Civilization. Civilization 6. Sid Meier's Civilization 6. And I'll be doing a brief little review. It's one of the games I've spent the most hours on. On my Switch. And... Let's see. Earth Huge. Yeah. Uh, and, you know, I've been reviewing inexpensive games on the Switch eShop, and I was thinking, you know, some of the, some of the inexpensive games are, t are like, uh, the base price of them is more expensive than this game. You can find this game for $15 easily. Usually it's on sale for 15 I've, I think I've seen it go as low as 10 or 12 you can create a small for a, a full game that you can sink dozens of hours into easily. Our competing ideas of how to govern and how to live threaten to bring conflict on a global scale. Now you might recognize that voice. Sean Bean, Ned Stark, Boromir over here reads uh, the whole game. So every time you advance a uh, technological advancement or a cultural advancement. Sean Bean reads a little quote from history that has to do with that advancement. Uh, if you don't know what civilization is, you basically get to create your own uh, civilization on any sort of map that uh, the game creates. It's very based on cities. You know, you create a city and a lot of stuff is dependent on that city. You create military units in the city, you create buildings in the city that improve the city's output. output. Um, so you, there are military units. It seems like the game really doesn't want you to always go for a military victory, but boy oh boy does it make it easy to go for military victory. I there was one time I really tried. No, there were twice, I remember. There was once I really tried to get a religious victory, and I did it uh, without military intervention. And there was another time I wanted a cultural victory, which has to, in this game, it has to do with tourists, <laughs> uh, which is kind of a funny way to describe the mechanic. But anyway, there, it, for me, and I need to play on a harder difficulty, uh, to really test myself, but I always get the military victory because I, I, I find it so simple and easy and satisfying as well. Uh, as you kind of heard the game clip out, well, it clipped out of my microphone, I, or in my headphones, I assume it clipped out in the video. This takes a billion years to load. That was like two minutes to load, which is a long, long time. Let's see, so I'm just gonna play a little bit to show you. Here's my cal cavalry, not cavalry. Here's my cavalry. As you can see from the map, in the mini map in the corner, I'm the orange dots with blue territory around it. I have essentially taken over the entire world. Um, you may also recognize the world map I chose to have it based on the real world map, which is which was a lot of fun for me. And you'll also see down here the the black outline cities or city states, which uh, were not in the original civilizations, but they've been a mainstay of civilization games for a few years now. I'm pretty sure. I don't keep up with every single civilization game, but I do. I've loved civilization since I was a kid. And I don't remember civilization having city-states like Auckland here and uh, Mitla and Amsterdam, Zanzibar, Buenos Aires, Toronto, and Brussels, to name a few. I don't remember those when I was a kid, like, you know, 15, 20 years ago. But, uh, yes, so I have taken over the world. I kind of just, I left the capital of India so that I could keep playing the game. 
because I'm obsessed. <laughs> There's also you'll see the red out the red background are barbarians. Um, Looks like there's a barbarian camp up there that could be easily taken. Uh, here's a barbarian camp. Some barbarian camps in this, in these, uh, there's an option. It's optional that if they last long enough, they can turn into city states, which I turned on for this version. I thought that would be fun. So I am far away and uh, far and away, the most advanced civilization in this save file, you'll see right here that represent that club represents warrior, which is the very first military unit that you can have in the game, along with scout, which is uh, the very first reconnaissance unit you can have in the game. So that's what these guys are dealing with while I'm dealing with, you know, uh, Renaissance level military. So, you know, even though my guy is under lower than half health, you know, he's gonna slaughter this poor barbarian warrior. Oh, and I see why I didn't want to do that. If you notice, the knight was already, or the cavalry was already on a barbarian encampment. So I had just forgotten that the last turn I had, I put him there so that I could then disperse the barbarian camp. And I forgot to do that, but that's okay. So where is this guy? Okay. Ah, I think that this bombard, actually, I think Amphipo Amphipolis, Amphipolis uh, just made this bombard, and obviously I don't need it because I <laughs> have conquered the world, but let's just have him go here, and it'll take, how many turns, 20? So that'll take 20 turns to get there. He'll never make it. Um, okay, I have a builder here. Here's another mechanic in the game. Uh, really, and it changes from game to game, honestly. The builder mechanic is always a little different. I remember one of the PC ga uh, Civilization games I once played. The builders never went away. And they just continuously worked this or that or built a road or blah, blah, blah. But in this, as you can see under two out of two movement, it has three builds. This builder has three builds. So for example, I'm probably gonna have him go here and make a plantation next turn. Okay. I wonder where he was headed. Let's have him go on land because land units who are embarked in the sea have a great big disadvantage. I wonder where they're headed. Okay. Interesting. Okay. Let's check my notifications. I'm going to click Y to see the bell notifications. Trajan has been defeated. So that was the Roman emperor. Uh, that was the last enemy that I defeated. There are some barbarians approaching my cities. I don't really care. My how my city needs housing. Uh, you know, at this point in the game, I'm not super concerned about. I have I have like 30 cities. I have all the cities in the game, other than the city states. So it's kind of like if one city doesn't have enough food, I'm a bit of a calloused dictator, and I just kind of ignore it for this game, for this save file. Got some tech boosts, usually from doing something special, like discovering an, a tribal village. Okay, Prokofka. I'm just going to choose something that looks good. Plus two housing is always good. But I like money, so I'm just going to build a stock exchange. My cop, I believe that was a Polish city. Now, they do need some housing. I'm just going to give them some extra housing in 23 turns. Amphipolis is doing great. They did just build a bombard. We were correct. Let's build an armory, even though I definitely, I definitely don't need an armory, you know? Harbor is always great. Do I have to destroy anything for a harbor? Looks like I can put it here. Well, I'm gonna push minus. Yeah, 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 okay. So I pushed minus on my pro controller. And you see in this hexagon at the very bottom, it says worked by one citizen, but in this hexagon, it does not say that. So I'm going to put it here 
So it because it's gonna get rid of all the food and production yielding once I put the harbor there. Um, I'll push select again. Still worked by one citizen. And now this only yields one gold instead of one food, one gold, and two production. So, you know, you just have to make little strategic decisions like that when you're leading a civilization. So that's kind of uh, a turn. The, the worst part about this game you're about to see. Um, let's go here and sleep. You're about to see the worst part of this game, which is, even though I have conquered everyone, all of the city-states and all of the barbarians manually take their turn. And especially when there's a bunch of enemy states, like before I defeated them, especially then, this takes a long time. And sometimes the game... Oh. Oh no, they attacked my cavalry. Oh well. He, did, he only took seven damage, that's nice. My line infantry, actually. That was not my cavalry. Here's my cavalry. Cavalry. Okay, now let's disperse the clan. If I raid the clan to get 150 gold, they'll come back the next turn with more units. So I'm going to disperse the clan. And I think it's part of my... Uh, because I'm Gilgamesh, one of my special abilities is dispersing clans gives me extra goodies. Hey, look. Like... This tech boost, your knowledge of electricity has advanced considerably. Considerably, Very cool. Uh, needs more housing, more housing, more housing. Uh, the White Owl Clan has been destroyed. Hey, that's what I just did. And I just got a tech boost. And I got a tech boost, which was a city-state quest. That's another part of this game is city-state quests. Um, I get an envoy there, which is a whole other thing that I won't really get into, but city-states are a whole diplomatic, strategic uh, part of the game that I think adds to the game. I think it's a very good addition. I'm gonna click on the city ranged attack. So my city, once you build walls in a city, you can attack uh, enemy units. This is a samurai. I think this will kill him completely. I turn on quick battle so that uh, so that the battling doesn't isn't animated every single time, and that makes those turns go faster. I was just talking about how the turns take so long, whenever there's so many other players. Uh, turning on quick battle is one way to make them go quick. Hey, look at the near the bottom of this little text box. It says camp pillaged. One of the barbarians must have pillaged this camp, and I do need a builder to unpillage it. To repair the camp, I do not have a worker nearby, but that's fine. It's not that big a deal, even though both of these camps are pillaged. Uh, well, let me just see, show you real quick how you can, if you have enough uh, money, you can buy units. So I'm going to push the L trigger to spend uh, 1,040 gold to buy this builder, and he will be usable next turn. This is an ironclad... <laughs> I think I, I think I left him here to heal a long time ago. Um, let's go up here, just to attack a barbarian ship later. This is Brussels. I think he just found a tribal village to get one of those Eurekas. But anyway, um, can I use him? to disperse the clan. Nice, mobilization has advanced considerably. So, oh, and two, I got two totalitarianism, very interesting, okay. So let me use this opportunity to um, give my overall review of the game real quick, since I've kind of shown you a lot of what goes into a game. Of course, this is the end of the game. I basically won this save file. I just kept India's capital. Delhi, which is for some reason in Canada. I kept that alive so I could keep playing. I always like trying to get nuclear missiles because that takes a really long time. And even though it's not much of a challenge, you know, it's not much of a challenge. I'm considering just going to a new save file. But anyway, this is a great game on Switch. Very simple. Uh, there's a few things that could be better, like, you know, that could be smoother whenever you scroll. It could just, it could be smoother. Whenever you 
are t- whenever other players are taking turns, you know, that could be faster, it could be smoother. The loading times, I prefer to be uh, faster. Um, I think it's a little too easy to get military victories in this game, although I do need to play on harder difficulties. I do need to play on harder difficulties to really test out that theory. Um, diplomacy is fun, uh, you know, especially with the city-states. Uh, every civilization has different goals that you can try to align with. Uh, oh, look at these. They're barbarian workers. Barbarian builders. Okay, if I had a military unit nearby, I could try and steal those guys from the barbarians and could have just used him up there, but that's okay. Um, there's a lot of good stuff in this game. There's a lot of great stuff. I love making a civilization. It's a lot of fun for me as a history nerd, as a, I mean, what else do you need to be other than a history nerd? I like civilization building, you know? It fascinates me and it's fun to, it's fun to play this game. It's a fun, fun game. And it's only $15 on the eShop usually. Uh, you might be able to find it for cheaper, but typically not. So yeah, the $15 game, pretty full, a lot of options, a lot of options to have a smaller world, a bigger world, continents, uh, islands, just one big Pangea. You know, there's a lot of different options as to what the map looks like. <clears throat> there's a lot of different individual civilizations with their own uniquenesses. Um, I love the little graphics here and there, the sound design, the music, a lot of it's great. I have sunk dozens of hours into this game simply because honestly, uh, the g- one game, to, to win one game takes 10 to 20 hours in my experience. Uh, maybe I'm doing it wrong, <laughs> but um, each game takes a long time. And it kind of feels like once you finish one game, you're like, I want to do another one eventually. Maybe not right away because it's so long, but eventually I want to do another game because it was so fun and I want there to be different circumstances, etc., etc. So overall, I can't give this game lower than a four and a half out of five. It's a great game. I love it. I'm a big fan of Civilization. There's a little bit of nostalgia in there. There's a little bit of me being a history nerd. Uh, a little bit of me being a diplomacy nerd. But I think that it's just a fun game. And I'll leave you with one final hint. One final tip that if you play this game, it might take you a long time to figure this out, but it saved my life. So, uh, you have the, if it, you move the left stick like this, you're gonna move hex by hex. And you can move several hexes at a time, and it accelerates. But the faster way to move is with the camera, the right stick. Now, here's the problem with that. Here's the problem at first, until I have the solution for you. If you then move your left stick to try and get over there, the camera snaps back to where your hex, your last hex chosen was, wherever your left stick ended up. But if you move the camera over here, uh, go to my capital of Uruk, if you click, the right stick, which some people call R3, it goes to the hex that you're centered on, which apparently is this square, which makes more sense. I was trying to get that one. Uh, That saves lives. It's that you can use the camera like this, and whenever you're ready to go to a square, it's like, okay, I'm right here now. So that, that one little mechanic, that little button press saved my life, so. Hope it saves yours. I hope that you have a grand old day or a grand old night. Uh, uh, bye. Uh, bye bye.